actually. I have a different opinion. Really? <laughs> yeah. Are we hot? We are hot. Yes. We're hot. hot boy. Hey, man. Listen, by this point, this should have been a dope intro. I hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> What's good, man? How's the week? Good. Good week. Leveling down. Keep moving. I said it too easy. Too easy. Yeah. Look at these two meat sandwiches over here. I try to kill him. I try to hide. You know what I'm saying? I hide. I'm the humble child. <laughs> who's, the, who's the other me saying? <laughs> I'm the humble child. He counts for two, I guess. Oh, it's too easy, man. Yeah. Hey, cool. So last week we went through a couple things. We tried to unpack some of those. But uh, before we get to that point, we had the fiber question, right? Yeah. So uh, fiber came up. Exactly. Rob? Uh, so the idea is that you need fiber, right? Need if you're devoid of fiber, then what happens is the food you consume in has a harder time getting out and it causes GI distress, meaning bloating, uh, meaning constipation, means just general irritableness yeah. that makes it inefficient for your system to do nutrient So if you had the best, healthiest food in the world, but it was devoid of fiber because it's processed, your body cannot utilize everything you put in. Uh, so you need a good amount of fiber per day. And the vast majority of Americans do not do oh, that. Sure. Yeah. yeah, and one of the things I think probably most people don't understand is uh, what fiber actually does in your body, and it really doesn't do anything. It's just the, the bacteria in your gut eats fiber, right? And so what it does is it helps feed that bacteria kind of its primary source of fuel so it can stay nice and active to break down. And the crazy thing is uh, there's 10 times now, not per size of course, but in the human body there's 10 times as many bacteria cells as there are human cells right so one could one could make the case that we're really just a host carrier for bacteria right you know one would be an idiot but it would be <laughs> <laughs> you know so what's the problem with too much fiber um, you know so everybody was the problem is like Americans don't have any moderation, right? And right. you know what? It's one of the things we love about us. So you go, I can get fiber. Well, then I'm going to get the most fiber. I'm going to yeah. get 100% fiber. I'm taking fiber. If you end up with too much fiber, any uh, any outcomes of that? First and foremost, yeah, uh, you can have diarrhea. You know, so because things. the that water will attach to wild. it. Well, yeah, that's right. So I would think about it all. Mm -hmm. A very visceral um, water slide. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is, depending on the type of fiber, because there's two types, you should have bloating, distress, you're gonna be farting a lot. It's going to be doing a bunch of stuff in the machine without stuff coming out that is gonna make you very uncomfortable. Yeah, for that's sure. That's due to too much fiber. Yep. Yeah, and the other thing that happens with too much fiber is, um, actually this is kind of a funny thing. Again, there's small, small things that happen quite often um, in studies where they become these giant launching points for brand new great ideas, and this would be one of them. So because fiber will lower some of your cholesterol, and we'll get to cholesterol next, uh, and the reason it lowers your cholesterol is your body makes bile in order to break down fat, and bile binds with fiber. And so with a decent amount of fiber, you're gonna, you're gonna expel that as well. In order to make more bile, it requires cholesterol. So you're gonna, you're gonna eat up some of the cholesterol and just making more bile, which is made you know, by your gallbladder there to, and what it does is it, it emulsifies fat, you know, like in the same way soap does. You put fat in a thing of water and it's completely separated. If you put soap in it, it'll actually be able to mix because it'll no longer be hydrophobic at that point. But anyways, if you have too much, well, another precursor to testosterone is cholesterol. You have to have cholesterol to make testosterone. So if your body is binding up all this excess cholesterol, in making bile because you have super high fiber content then you're not going to have an excess to make hormones at that point right? so should we have should we try to eat more that's cholesterol yes, that's, foods with cholesterol in it oh, for yeah. testosterone i like this, health? I like this spin off that's right i like this spin off yeah man so you want to you want to tackle that first yep so i would offer that the short answer is yes the longer answer is yes with a comma and it's how you get those fats, how you get okay. those lipids. The lipids will come in and we'll be specific to about HDLs and LDLs. Why is that important? Because something that's a hydrogenated oil, uh, a coconut oil, is going to be broken down different and slower through the processes of your body than an almond or a cashew is. And that allows your body to do a thing called nutrition partitioning and utilize that. So absorption 
how it can use it, utilization, how it employs that, uh, those two are different. So in your opinion, what real oil? Quick, real quick, so hold that because he said hydrogenated oil. And so for most people, uh, to help understand what that means is they take the fat and more or less the fat is boiled inside of water. And, the, and it, what happens is an extra hydrogen atom gets attached to the fat in order to make it stable at room temperature. And that's what extends that shelf life. Well, by forcing that extra hydrogen atom to extend to that chain on, on that lipid chain, it makes it much harder than for your body to break it down as well, right? And right. so then that's when yeah. you end up with big old fatty pieces of, uh, of those lipids free floating through your bloodstream. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so for us at home, so like I cook with olive oil, depending on what it is, so like what type of oil would be the best to get the good cholesterol? I 100% stand by being half Italian. Yeah, like straight up olive oil, period. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You, you can't go wrong. The reason it is the absorption utilization rate. So, again, hydrogenated oil, people who want to put coconut on that pan, let's say this is, you know, 15, we put 15 on, 15 grams, 15 milliliters, mm -hmm. whatever, we put that on there. Your body may not see that because it's going to have to break it down. Where I know if I put on paper I need to eat 15 or consume 15 right. and I do olive oil because it's in a pure form, I get 15 grams of fat back. And what do you know about the out. avocado? Because, like, I've, I've used both. Thumbs up. But Either one, one, right? I just yeah. don't like eat. I don't like avocado chewing. Avocado oil? Is avocado oil, saying? sorry. Avocado oil. Yeah. This is like, you, now we're, I don't want to say we're splitting hairs, but like how much of it is I want to chew it in its form versus I want to use it with salsa. So right. I want to use okay. it with you know, guac and other things. Okay. okay. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, like everything is going to be a little process. So you're trying to find, you, actually, so like the difference between um, extra virgin olive oil, virgin olive oil, Right, it's not a, it's not their, their intimacy preferences, of course, right? <laughs> right. <It's> a, <laughs> you know, it's funny because we see that stuff. It's like, what the hell does that even right. mean, right? Right. And and so for most people, myself, for most of my life, I'm like, what? Why is it even called that? You had to look it up. Well, what it is is when they actually express the the olives, the oil that comes out with the smallest amount of tension mm -hmm. is extra virgin, and then. The next kind of layer of tension is virgin olive oil. Does that make sense? Right. So it's very little pressures applied to it. When you get all the way down to like the highly compacted amount that's going to come out later, it's like third base. It says third yeah. base. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Attach <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> bring it on back. <laughs> it just got hydrogenated. Yeah. <laughs> right? All right. And so why would that even matter? Well, at the deepest kind of roots of that, you know. Whatever is going to come out express easily is going to be broken down easier, right? right? And so, yeah, that's kind of the same thing. You know, the thing about cholesterol period, though, is in a healthy human, you're going to, you can produce it yourself. Your body can produce it. So, like, if you take in the right nutrients in the absence of ever taking in cholesterol, and I wouldn't recommend this. Yeah. This is actually probably what's led to more problems than anything. Uh, you can make it. If you take in an excess then you're just going to dispel it, right? So in a healthy human, you're going to be pretty good to go. Okay, what do you think, Lionel? You got some color commentary on all that goodness? No, I'm like absorbing <laughs> right now. Like Taking it in, huh? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I didn't know. So when the when you talk about the extra and virgin olive oil and all that stuff, like which one's actually better for you? The extra or does it matter? I would say you're splitting hairs. Yeah, okay. it's, think of it less so as like which is better and more as which is efficient. Okay, so, so one is better. Little, so extra virgin olive oil is because it's more efficient or better for you because just means that your body is correct. So you okay. have to now arguably have to touch the surface gotcha. of the law of thermodynamics, meaning right. how much energy I have to expel through oxidation to break it down. Okay, so extra virgin if it's the least requirement energy requirement to break down then yes. if i get 30 grams i eat 30 grams i maybe yield 27 or 30. virgin if we say it's five grams or efficiency of uh, you know like 90 percent i get 25. regular maybe it's only 20 so not like 70 percent efficiency so okay. just what you what you put in on paper or right. what you think you're consuming versus what your body uses for those hormonal balance vice the energy to create that hormonal balance i got you that's it 
And for all the people of the land, what Rob said is <laughs> it depends on what the purpose is. If you're trying to get max uh, actual nutrients from what you're taking in, then the extra virgin. If you're trying to get a little less total nutrients in, then maybe you work your way down as far as how difficult it was to be expressed. But, um, you know, the thing is, I would say kind of period, back to the cholesterol piece is, uh, you know, what most people fail to recognize, and it's okay because it's it's not popular opinion by any measure, is why is cholesterol bad, right? Bad, and so they say, well, it's the LDLs, right? And so all that means is the the low density light, low density lipid, lipid, and so cholesterol is basically a boat, right? And so on the boat, you either have a whole bunch of passengers or you don't have a lot of passengers. Well, your high density has a lot of passengers. And what it's doing is, is it's taking lipids back to the liver. And the LDL is a boat that has not very many passengers, but it's a big molecule, just like the other one. And it's taking from the liver to the cells, right? And so, well, what's wrong with that? You know what I mean? Any guesses? Well, if it's taking from the liver to the cells, the bad stuff, yeah. that means you collect it. That bad stuff, you don't need them lipids going to the yeah, cell, uh, or do we? Yeah. yeah, the way I'd frame it is think about it more like similar to Jordan's thing is like as a ferry. So if it's really really full here, and I bring it to the liver, and now I have to offload it, but I can't get out as many as I put on, and they keep coming and keep coming and coming. What happens is you create fatty tissue in the liver, and you make it harder for the liver to function and dispel that to get them out. And thus, your body can't use them on the return system. Yeah. So here's the wild thing, and I, and I encourage you guys to go Google this. Um, Try to figure out exactly, this is what's interesting, is they say it's associated with, they say high cholesterol in the bloodstream is associated with heart attacks, but as far as causation, it's actually, it's not actually shown that, right? And the reason why is this, this is, this is you're gonna go spend some time Googling this and figure out exactly what it is. Hold on, we got a puppy over here. Get out, buddy. He smells Damn. better. Oh boy. Yeah, he smells better. <laughs> Damn. Right? Good boy. Jermaine was the good boy, not the dog. <laughs> <laughs> right, so here's the Google piece is take a look and see exactly what's going on. But the reason why in America we think high cholesterol equals heart attack is because LDL is part of the clotting process, right? So this, this can be a dangerous game that we play sometimes. We try to lower the LDL part of our cholesterol so much, at the same time, you're then gonna have a harder time clotting off blood at that point. Well, if in your arteries, they're so thick and they have so much kind of byproduct stored up in there, then you don't, by the, by the natural logic, want to be able to have uh, a high amount of clotting factor because that's going to end up trying to clot a, a bridge across the artery and that's going to prevent oxygen from getting to that part of your, your heart and that's what's going to cause your heart attack. So then the secondary question is like, well, what causes the, the walls of that to start actually be stiff and what causes them to actually start to grow the bridge in the first place? Does this make sense? Am I kind of mm -hmm. making sense so far? Mm -hmm. So like I think you guys can probably see, but we got, we'll call this an artery, the middle of the table. Well, when the artery is completely wide open and stuff can just float through here, it doesn't matter if you got, you could have giant pieces of fat floating around inside of your, uh, and fat's hydrophobic like we already talked about, which is why the cholesterol, why all the fat molecules, lipid molecules sit inside of the cholesterol is because fat's hydrophobic. So if it gets inside your bloodstream, it'll try to separate out the same way. So what happens is cholesterol on the inside is hydrophobic and on the outside is hydrophilic which means that it can float through your bloodstream which is mainly water right over 50 percent is water but inside it can store these fat molecules these lipid molecules right not fat they're smaller than fat they're lipid right you put a bunch of lipid together you get fat just like amino acids make up protein does that make sense so what happens is you have this bloodstream that's nice and healthy and everything goes through here well what causes this to get damaged in the first place. So if we're looking at this high cholesterol diet, this is the high cholesterol, low cholesterol, isn't as much the problem as what's damaging this bloodstream in the first place, right? So what's damaging the bloodstream? Is it 
Could it be um, salt inflammation? Could be some inflammation, absolutely. Increased blood pressure, yeah. increased pressure on your your walls. Yeah, you know, now we're so getting like they start and They start hardening up. That's right. So that. now we got some With chronic inflammation. inflammation. What causes that? Gluten. I'm sorry. Yep. I'm sorry, I'm sorry my soapbox. I'm yep. probably the only gluten-free person. <laughs> say, you're probably gluten light, huh? Well, yeah, I, I do have a question though. When you say what, what is the basis of a, what, what is an example of a high cholesterol diet? Yeah, so keto, keto. keto is a high cholesterol. Actually, I would say most American diets are. They're both high. They're high cholesterol, high salt, high fat, okay. high sugar, high, high carbs, high everything, high, high, everything, high, high, high everything. Yeah, that's the problem. Is, and any foods that's processed is going to be high in all those. Right. They're going to be lower in protein. That's right. That's right. That's exactly it. They're high in everything except for protein. Okay. Right. And so this is actually, you know, we we could you can spin off all these conversations. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, yeah. we could just kind of jump from spot to spot. So we'll take a thirty seconds on this one. But this is why every diet, every diet that you come up with, you can make a new movie about about yeah. how it kicks all the other diets' asses, right? Mm. So if you you can make a vegan movie, they've done good jobs of that. You can make a you can make a bacon movie. Right? And you're like, no, yeah, you could. You could do yeah, it. Right. legit. If you just ate bacon, you'd get plenty of fats. So you'd be a little low on protein as well. You'd probably have way too much salt. But if you're healthy, your kidneys would expel yeah. it. Right? You can make any diet because every diet is going to kick the American diet's ass when it comes compared. Right? For framing, when, when we say modern American diet, yeah. what we actually real life mean of your three macros is lower protein because mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable, it's satiating, and it's expensive. Oh. Higher fats, higher carbs. Why? Because almost everything is processed, bins these two together because it devoids the fiber and in the processing of said product, carbs and fats go together and then with the byproduct of that, what happens is people have carbs, they eat it, begins the processing, they get hungry again. They didn't account for the satiation that came from the fats, which takes you know up to four hours to break down. So That's now right. what happens is you get to work at nine, you crush some chow at nine, like, oh right. man, you eat at noon, you probably had a snack in between because you're hungry because the carbs stopped using, you're still hungry, now it's noon, now you eat at three, now it's five, now you're snacking the rest of the time. And you have less than 12 hours for your body to break that bulk product of fill in the blank calories as tissue down. So the modern American diet is one of excess, regardless to the macro, but inside of that excess, it's excess in the two things you don't really need to power the machine, neither fix it or repair because everything parasympathetically. So rest and digest stuff, like hair, nails, bones, all right. that comes from protein. So if you don't have enough, it has to use two other things, but you give it those things in excess. Yeah, and protein's an acquired taste, right? Yeah. Like you yeah. can pick up any, just about any fruit and it's the taste of it will be like more satiated. It's not, it's short-term satiated, right. right? Like it's, it's desirable. You know, you have to season meat. You have to, you know, if you just take a piece of steak and you throw it on the grill and try to eat it, that's not very good. What we like to marinate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like, I'm not a good example. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, he doesn't count. For you know what I mean? But, but one of those driving tools, I'm the same yeah. as you, Rob. One of those things is like, I know, like we're Pavlov's bell at this point. I know that the taste of this protein I'm eating equals these outcomes and therefore it increases the desirability of that as well, right? Like it would be, it would you'd have a hard case to make that if it was your final meal that you would take a bland steak or just almost any ice cream you could grab off the shelf, yeah. right? Like if there was no tomorrow, it's like, you know, I think I'm just gonna have a tasty treat for my last meal here. Like, no, I'm just gonna take this well done steak, right? Like, you know, and in, and in older times, pretty much, or overseas, anytime you go overseas, and you eat publicly, everything is well done yep. because yeah. you don't have the refrigeration. So arguably early on for all of us, it was just the taste of meat was a well done cooked food because you don't have the same refrigeration. You compare that with an apple, they're not even close on taste wise, right? Yeah. So that's why we're so low in protein. It's, it's another thing why people just naturally don't get enough protein. It's harder to yeah. chew. It doesn't have the same just off the shelf high taste to it, right? And humans don't necessarily associate why it's so great to eat in the first place. Yeah, you gotta yeah. dress it up a little bit. Like yeah, instead of fruit, you can just grab, eat. That's it. That's it. A that's steak, right. you gotta either season it, time, stuff, yeah. Yeah. season it, whatever, <laughs> you know, chicken, whatever it is, you gotta yeah. do something to it to make it taste good to you. Now, now versus just what are you doing? What are you doing to marinate this chicken? Uh, it depends. I, I, 
I switch it up. Like, flower. it depends. Flower. If I'm playing ahead, the flower. Oh, well, I mean, it depends if it's a Friday or not. You know? Friday. <laughs> Friday, yeah. If I'm frying, it's different. Yeah. But, like, if I'm, if I'm thinking ahead, I usually try to think, babe, hey, what I want to cook the next day. So, yeah. I'll, it depends, really. I yeah. Sometimes I'll put a rub on my chicken and then. Is it locked on the refrigerator? That's it. And then the next now, day. I hope y'all didn't miss that nugget. Right. He said, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do what? The next day. The next day. Yeah, that's right. But figure out what I'm going to do the next day. And it's these small things. They don't seem like they matter, but boy, oh, do they. Oh, it does. Yep, right? Sure. What about you? You be marinating there? You just grabbing, go, you, you salting on the go? <laughs> so I got this pretty fancy grill, right? All right. This, this, uh, it's, no, no shout out to them. It's a great grill. Tra it's a Traeger grill. It's like one of those new age pellet grills. Oh, yeah, so this podcast is brought to you by Traeger grill. <laughs> My brother has one. Yeah, so man, like it'll, and then what's dope about it is they give you the app that gives you all these recipes, right? Mm. And the, some of the recipes have you smoke it first and then cook it right after that, and then taste like the smoke thing. So I don't have to throw anything too much on mm. it. And typically, I don't put anything on it because I am in a rush to eat and then get back out the door. So, right, right. Yeah, and surprisingly, I don't like chicken. So, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean by surprisingly? Surprise! Yeah, what's that mean? I don't like chicken. Where, where are you from? <laughs> Yo, I don't like. I don't eat a lot of chicken. I don't like a lot of fried chicken. Uh, I just don't like the texture of chicken. Yeah. So I, I like. What's your blood type? Do you know? I have no idea. Yeah. I have to go figure that out. AB, AB or o, yeah. 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 So I like, you know, <coughs> steak, as, as rare as you can possibly eat it. You know, straight off the grill. How about that? How about that? There you go. So how we got to this point was the information diet. Right? <laughs> so as we were chatting on, ran it back around, and we were talking about this bloodstream piece. So one of those is definitely inflammation, right? And so like, what is inflammation, right? That we hear these terms thrown around a lot. Well, what it is is when you cut yourself, your body gets swollen in that area, and often we think, oh, it's infected. Well, it's not infected; it's inflamed, right? Mm -hmm. So it inflames. It increases the amount. Of blood flow to that area, but but come here, buddy. Lay down, lay down. Good boy. We might do a dog reveal at the end here. Yeah, <laughs> on the table. <laughs> Make sure it's not slate over here. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so what happens is, what did I say last? The inflammation about the. You're speaking to what inflammation as far as what it's actually is. It's yeah. the system localizing the blood flow to allow the recovery. That's right. You know, and so here's a funny thing for the divers out there, or if you're not a diver, if you go down to depth for a long period of time, you store up a bunch of nitrogen bubbles. Then when you come back up, if you don't come up at certain set stop points to allow that gas to expand in your bloodstream, then you get the thing called the bends everybody's heard of. And the reason they call it the bends, interestingly enough, is all those nitrogen bubbles start to congregate at the bends of your body, right? So they congregate at all your joints first, right? That's what people start to get this. Well, guess what? Inflammation, very similar. Everywhere where there's, there's you know, a straight line bloodstream, like from your aorta, it's not gonna be the problem. That's not where the inflammation is gonna be. It's gonna be when it gets down to the organs, the end stage, the small little turns that it has to make, and now you start to have this inflammation in there, like you said, right. and now to deliver nutrients and oxygen, right? And not only to deliver, but to uh, stage off all the toxins, right? All this excess of carbon and stuff that gets created just by existing you're gonna have a hard time doing that and you're gonna increase your blood pressure, right. for sure. Yeah, any other thoughts on the inflammation piece? So what causes inflammation? A lot. A lot of stuff. <laughs> Pretty much everything we do. Working out reaction. causes inflammation. Yeah, it does. What that's you right. eat, depending on what you eat, like say gluten, if you're gluten intolerant, that's what causes inflammation. And that's even right. if you aren't gluten intolerant, you just haven't eaten it in excess. That's right. Your body's gonna get inflamed, that's you right. know. And I think, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, a sign of inflammation, unless you've actually ate something you know was bad, is when you go to the bathroom. If, yeah. if you're having a cloudy day in the toilet or diarrhea, you, you're inflamed somewhere in your body. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is when you eat a pretty low inflammatory diet, you can walk through all the things that will pop up, right? Yeah. And right. so that's the thing, right? It's like, there's, there's positive stress, you stress, and then there's negative stress. So you need stress to survive, that's normal. Like actually a plant, so if you have an outdoor plant, 
and it's supposed to be outdoor and you put it inside and it has no okay. wind, no stress, it'll just, it'll look like Free Willy's fin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It needs that stress to survive. So we need stress as well, but we need the kind of stress that leads to positive outcomes, right? right. And so what happens is you just wanna be careful. Here's the easiest answer. All the high processed foods, almost anything, right? And so I don't have to tell you to eat gluten free because it'd be hard to, to eat gluten and stay non-processed, right? Yeah. So if you're eating non-processed foods now, it could find its way into a couple things, you know, uh, flour even still is probably gonna be highly processed, but barley and rye and stuff like that. But if you stay with whole foods that are non-processed, then you're gonna have a much lower gut inflammation, right? You won't have that leaky gut syndrome where your yeah. gut is, and what's actually causing the inflammation is you have these little fingers in your gut called villi. And what happens is you start to tear these up through the different foods that are coming in, and then the the all the acid and, and not just acid, but the the basically the soup that's in your gut starts spilling over into your bloodstream, right? And now once it gets in your bloodstream and floats around, this is what causes the inflammation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What's a day in the diet look like for uh, this beefcake right here? What you doing? <laughs> Same thing every day. Half scoop of whey protein with dextrose, pre, post is MRE light and with Rob, bananas. what is dextrose? Uh, so magically in the 90s when we decided that sugar made Americans fat, it wasn't that we overeat with the induction of fast foods. Right. Uh, glucose became a bad term. At the molecular level, it's glucose. Uh, your skeletal muscle mass needs glucose in its form for ATP so you can curl heavy things. So dextrose is just... A different name for glucose, same exact That's molecular right. structure. That's right. We rebranded um, the amino acid of carbohydrate, yeah, which is glucose. Exactly. Right. Right. Um, That's it. Four bananas, five milliliters of olive oil for my post. Uh, that just enable the processing of the banana. I slow the breakdown a little bit of the, the proteins. Wait, wait, the olive oil you eat, you drink it, just put it in there. Now the bananas. As I said, this is the creative oh, side. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do yeah. all, all, all my stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah, yeah the bananas. Where are you? That's rough, right there. Man. <laughs> you deserve that, buddy. Then, unlike Lionel, I like the chicken. Okay. One because it's just efficient, and then the proteins that are in it for complete. Uh, amino acid profile. Okay. I can eat less of it, which costs me less for the right. one I want to eat. So three ounces of plain, non-rubbed, no marinated chicken, <laughs> straight, uh, straight, straight, and straight then 148 dry. grams blended, or re really doesn't matter, just weighed. Uh, so it's 100 grams of carbs in from oats, okay. just regular oats. I just food process it down to a powder so I can drink it. Efficiency. That's meals. Uh, three, four, five, and then six is either casein or eggs uh, right before bed uh, with the same thing, 52 grams of oats weight and 20 milliliters of olive oil. And since I know so y'all didn't get all that, you can pause and rewind it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm trying to figure it out. Like, so most of your meals are are almost blended and, and drank? 100%. Okay, so that's so, so that's so much easier to do. You don't like it, take, it takes me I, as long I, as this, step. So that's that's what I would like to talk to you about that more because I think that's yep. I'm I'm trying to find the right diet as I go into um, my season. Yeah. As I go into my season, there's tag dog here. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> um, it is way easy for me to drink my mm -hmm. you know drink my dinner and bring my breakfast than yep. it would be to actually sit there and cook it. So. I'm a, I've well, we've known each other for like eight, nine years yeah. now, and for longer than that. Yeah. Maybe not as long as I can remember, but right. in excess of a decade, I've blended all okay. my foods. And the reason being is just ease of consumption. Right. Uh, for timeliness of my job, yeah. it ensures I will never miss a meal. Right. If and when I do have a training event, a thing, a deployment, whatever, uh, as soon as I'm done with something, I just come back and I can drink it rather than 30 minutes to make that meal. Right. 30 minutes to eat that meal, cleaning it. Now I'm an hour deep by six meals, six hours a day. That's 25% of my day spent on that before. You're yeah. chewing your protein. Yeah. See, I'm I do. Yeah, I do so. chew my protein. The only reason for that um, is just to allow it to break down at interval. Okay. Because I still eat every 180 minutes or three hours. Uh, that allows my body to utilize it as it goes through the processes. Right. The matrix, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'd be interested in trying that yeah. for 90 days. 
You know, Absolutely. and here's the deal. Um, Rob's diet will become very unhealthy for the average person. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. And so, like, that's one of the things that you have to realize as well is, like, the meticulousness that he puts to his diet is probably non-sustainable for the normal person. I wouldn't right? recommend it. It's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it for most people because food is, for Rob, he's able to make it very utilitarian. It is a tool. It, that is not the association that most humans have with food. Like, oh, <laughs> I like this. Like a <laughs> but but you're right. Dude, I, it's, it's, it's fuel. But it's I, I give it nothing it's, less than yeah, fuel. Yeah, it's, it's right. efficient. It's efficient, it, and you know? That's just, I know Rob and the meticulousness of how he approaches things is like, I would not recommend that for the average person because for most people, food is social, food has memories, food is interaction, food is friends, food is relationships, food, right. are, food are all right. these things, right? So like for most people, when you think of, when you think of uh, sitting down post dinner, they think, well, dessert, well, that's an experience, that's an entertainment, that's all those things. That's not how Rob's approaching this. And the problem is when, for Rob, he's figured this out, but when you leave that void that void of experience there for most people, they're going to figure out uh, either it's going to cause psychological sure. issues yeah. or it's going to yeah. cause depression issues. Right. It causes a lot of stuff. So what you're trying to figure out is how do I have the healthiest diet I can without it honestly being like pure Rob's outcome? <laughs> because well, yeah. that's not a bad thing, but it's it's a bad for a lot of people. Yeah. I would say probably almost everybody. I was looking at it in terms of there's a time period from start to finish of my season where right. I don't see any of you guys. Right? Yeah, 100%. Right. That's right. That's exactly. So yeah. it's, it's wake up on the water, yeah. get off the water at 8, clean the boat, or do I have time to eat? And in yeah. between, That's right. I don't have time to eat. I'm not, I can't pull over at a restaurant. Exactly. You know, my lunch is with my clients, so unless I bring it That's right. or whatnot. And sometimes they, they frown upon me even eating in front, you know what I mean? Right. So something that I could grab yep. quickly. Eat it, and I'm right, right. It makes sense, then, you know. How dare you eat on the clock? <laughs> <laughs> right, but that's part of it. Yep. And then, um, and I'm not saying everybody's like that, but it just happens here and there. And so, how do you, how do I sustain like a full day in 90, 100 degree weather? Yep. But you know, just just based off of drinking gallons of water, like it's not, it's not sufficient. Yep. You know what I mean? That's the other thing yeah. too with the water is that's how I ensure, right? To Jordan's point about the equity, right? Is knowing how much lean tissue I have, yep. lean muscle mass, right? I use those shakes and why I drink the carbs. One is just for ease of consumption, but two, it guarantees that I'll never be dehydrated. Yeah. Because then I have to have water, uh, body weight, you know, times and change. So it's right. like 128, 144 ounces of water yep. a day. Okay. Like, and so for it, from a tool standpoint, it can be a great tool for you, okay. right? It, right, the, short term. Short yeah. Term. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for yeah. him, probably forever, but for, right. most, <laughs> for most people, like, to separate, like, the chewing is part of the satiation for yeah. most people, right? Yeah. So, like, if you're not chewing your food, if you're not going through this process, if you're not experiencing this, and, and just from a psychological perspective, what happens, right, is, let's say we go way back in the day and we're out here hunter-gathering, and you're, you, you have this long journey, you get to it, you, you come across this treasure, you, you eat the treasure, you experience the treasure, right? It's like, it's a journey. Right. Rob's able to separate that because, I mean, honestly, as a Green Beret <laughs> life he has and everything else, like, he's got enough other stuff going on that it's not that big yeah, a deal. Yeah, for sure. For most people, it's like, it's 11 o'clock. Time to lunch. You've been working this right. long through the right. day, right? So now it's like, psychologically, I'm stepping out of that role. I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna eat some food, yeah. and I'm, mm, you know, this. And I'm checking my stuff. Yeah, That's right. Happy hour. That's hour right. And stuff, but so it right. works though, because like oh, I, I adopted some of that like yeah. with school. That's yeah. Because like right. even now during the day, like so, like breakfast and lunch, those don't have to be for me. It don't have to be enjoyable or anything. Right. Just, just to fill that hunger hole, really. Right. Like, so like, <laughs> I'll have pre-made like shakes, or I have a Ziploc bag with whatever yeah. I can pour in a shake. And my 10 minute, 15 break, I can shake and drink real quick. And yeah. it takes my hunger pain away, I keep moving. That's right. And not have to go to the snack machine 
and get chips and like right. a bag of M&Ms, you know. That's so right. I would wonder what like financially you save a year off. Oh, it's, it's, it's oh, yeah. ridiculous. Would, like, so yeah. in context, because right. just off of yep. not eating out, like eating out, if you eat out every day, it's like $30 yep. a day, and, you know, the numbers, all that stuff. That's right. So I'd, I'd be fascinated to see that part. Too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably like 70 cents to $1.30 a meal, depending which, how much oats I have, and then all of it factored in, because chicken's $2 a pound, yeah. and then four ounces a day, so 12 ounces a day, you math that out. I'm at six pounds a week. Uh, I eat a little bit more on on Sunday, so just deviating again. Yeah, that's yeah. It. That's, it. That's, that's, yeah. that's right. And so, if you're trying to get leaner as well, one of the things really is the chew is actually a big deal. Yep. Right. Yep. <clears throat> and so, he's taking his nutrients in, and we'll kind of sum this up on the back half of like why what's how do you utilize Rob's mm -hmm. perspective right with how do you pair that up and really the best outcome I would say is a hybrid and the hybrid yes. being you want to like Jermaine said you want to have your cooler your snacks your go-to's whatever it is right right like Jess um, is sponsored by a company this beef jerky company that's awesome right and it's there's no nitrates there's not it's as clean as you can get for beef jerky so it is as close to I need some protein and I go cook it real quick mm -hmm. as possible. So if you have an excess of those, you got those in the vehicle, we do, right? Road trip, we're going down the road. We're like, our plan is to stop and get some lunch at somewhere that's a good a good meal, but we don't see that, right? So we're like driving through, you know, the Funiac or whatnot. We yeah. don't see we don't see it. And it's like, cool, well, that's where you want to be able to pull all these prepared hybrid outcomes yeah. that you can still stay on track. But to use that for every single meal for the average person would be pretty difficult. Yeah. You were right. on a boat, right. perfect. Like, yeah, right. it's 128 span where you just, you know, you're just a zombie for, and I think this is where, and this is just my you know, <clears throat> opinion of it, where a lot of fishermen fall out That's right. uh, halfway through is because of their nutrition. If you look at yeah. more than the average fisherman, I'd say above That's right. average, is overweight. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a stereotypical look. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. It is that. That's so, it. you know, how do you sustain that 120 day period of in the sun, constantly moving? Because whatever you think about it, the <coughs> boat is always in motion. So your body's always flexed to keep you balanced. So it's a lot of energy being burned. Yeah, that's right. That. That's, that's right. And true. mentally, you know, chess players burn 6,000 calories. Yeah, because yeah. it's mental. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's it's right. crazy. Function. So yeah. you're looking for fish. You're right. looking to control the boat. You're looking to control the tide. You're dealing with clients. Exactly. You know the I mean? entertainment aspect entertainment. talking. That's it. That's you got to be high right. energy the whole time. Yeah, it yeah. makes perfect sense. And um, then for most fishermen, too, you're deficient nutrients all day. Then you get back to the dock. And now, like we talked about, yeah. that, that experience, you want to relax so right. drink a couple beers right. everything right. else and so again you cause the inflammation you cause some of that that poor outcome to happen yeah, so that's something I'm trying to that's something that I'm really trying to fix this year because I do want to do this you know for nine ten more years but I can't that's do right. it without that's right. my body being functioning Definitely. you know what I mean yeah, that's right. then I have my nephew on the boat with me and so it's it's really just a good example too because he got really big into the gym that's right you know, he's a big dude too, so. He is a big yeah, kid. He's a big yeah. kid. Yeah. He's bigger yeah. than 16, 17, 18. <laughs> he's a big kid. Oh, look, know. that's bigger I mean, than I'll ever be. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that, I think that I want to get some more information from you, from you about that and see how we can set that up and make yeah. that. Yeah, uh, that's exactly uh, it. Everything, the, the best outcome is these kind of continual adjustment surge operations yeah. that move from, from focus to focus to focus. Like, Again, Rob's style of dieting for the average person for a duration of their life won't work. Not gonna work. Yeah. And he probably went through a couple bumps along oh, yeah. the way to acquire sure. that consistency yep. as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's it's if you have kids every day until you don't, you have to tell them to brush their teeth. Right? right. So it's like yeah. you know, it's such a menial task, but you're like, yeah. go brush teeth, go brush teeth, go brush teeth. It's even teeth. harder that you do it with kids and you have their snacks and you have yep. that's right. Yeah, that's tough. That's right. And that's yeah, go ahead. So like, just I just question. So, like you're saying, how you have you eat pretty strict. So like, let's say you got someone who's like me, who I like to enjoy a meal at least. So like, <laughs> breakfast, <laughs> lunch, you know, and anything up to dinner is pretty strict. You know, mm -hmm. plain strict. But dinner, I, you know, I want to enjoy a meal, so that's I'm right. gonna enjoy have a meal. It that's might right. have carbs, might have high fats. It might, it may not, but mm -hmm. that's what dinner is going to look like. Does that set you back? Nope, 100%. So the, the framing for all of it is first and foremost just getting the 
right amount of calories and then it's the right macros as a breakdown of those calories, then it's timing. So you and those three things you just mentioned have got the right amount of fuel in with the right types of fuel at the right times. So the last is less than 10% of your equity. Right. So if you want to sit and enjoy it and chew, the only thing to remember is that the harder it is to break down, the more energy you're using to break it down. That's it. Okay. But yeah, everybody that I would advise or speak to about nutrients and how to do it, I recommend to none of them, minus their pre and their post, to right. have to be a shake. Okay. Uh, unless there's bedtime, right? So they, they consume within 30 minutes of going down for bed because when you lay down, after reflux is more likely. Right. Mm -hmm. There's some considerations there depending on the individual. Traditionally, I'll recommend egg whites or a casein shake. You know, before a diet, you go to bed. Before you go to bed. Because okay. it's just an easier process. It's easier and to then once you're you know, you supplying, you're not. Yep. Because no, a lot of people also don't want to be like nine or 10 at night respective to their, their Right. Cardiac cadian rhythm, like right. cooking. Now they're warm. They're warm. They eat. They lay down. Now they can't sleep, and it just adjusts themselves. Yeah. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, a hybrid approach to it. So for you guys out there, how do you kind of put this into your diet? Is you figure out, you pre-plan for when the plan goes south, yep. right? So you have a couple backups. The okay, I'm going to go to work today, and I'm going to eat properly, and I'm going to go to this restaurant, whatever, and then all of a sudden some new reports came in that you got to get handled. Yep. And now instead of getting a crappy meal, you can pull from this reservoir that you have built up, yep. right? Or if you know I'm going in this day and I'm not going to have time for lunch, then you utilize something yep. where you already have yep. it set up. Yep, right? like my school bag, <clears throat> I have a couple like random like bags, of, like two scoops and some dextrose, yeah. yep. bag of peanuts just sitting there just in case. That's you right. Know, I get hungry. I get hungry. That's right. And then for most people, remember this: we are addicted to short-term results. So, Act. right? I'm gonna go do so. I, I'm gonna go. You know what? I'm doing Rob's diet, and then I'm gonna do it. <laughs> right? That's why I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna get some quick results. I'm gonna see what I yeah. see. Yeah. And then inevitably, the things that I gave up in order to have that yep. style of diet are going to lead me to binge eat. They're going to lead yep. me to, to crappy eat because I don't have this emotional unpacking of my meal as well, right? So probably the best outlook is to be prepared to enjoy your food, right? To enjoy your food that is a, a, a wise decision for the goals that you want and to have this hybrid right. approach to be prepared for when it goes south, sure. right? So one of the things we didn't cover, we'll cover next week is, what are the other things that damage this blood vessel and actually cause these heart attacks in here, right? Yeah. That's it, so we'll unpack that a little bit more. You guys got anything else? Nah, uh, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. what's up, man? <laughs> Y'all like, yeah. ready to sign out like yeah, a boss? What do they call it, detox? detox? I'm gonna do the 90 day Rob detox. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it, it's like the honeymoon diet. It's, yeah. it's, it's, so it's 90 days because you know no matter what, hey, own it for a month, you made it through a month. Right. For, now you're day, one third. Day by day Shit, now yeah. I only got one month left, 30 that's days. Yeah. And that's after it. that, yeah. That's, it's, yeah, it's, man, that's a special operation uh, uh, process mindset for how you approach any of these things is <laughs> you do not think about the finish line. Yeah, day by day. Nope. That's it. Yeah. Event by event. Short term wins. Yeah. Okay. Event by yep. event. Like, okay. you know, you can, you, I encourage people to schedule your day, mm -hmm. but. I have that. the flexibility. I'm gonna go like I'm doing this event. Like all I gotta do is make sure I get my first meal in. Yeah. You know, right. If you get your first meal, the likelihood that you're gonna continue to do that is yeah. gonna get better. You start missing the. You start thinking, man, man, we're gonna be busy all day. I don't know how I'm gonna get all this in. All like, dude, Just keep moment that first by moment. Meal. That's it. Right. That's it. Yeah. For sure. All right, man. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can mess this up. Here we yes. go. Right. Who ya? Never, Never quit. quit. See, you messed it up. Oh <laughs> You're like, well, uh, I'm new. That was like every time, yeah. every time. Like, These, uh, they prep for it in the park. Right, right, right. You're like, go.